The film begins with Detective Spencer and his partner Driscoll arriving at Captain John Boylan's residence. When Spencer enters Boylan's house, he notices that the guy is drunk, and his wife looks beaten and assaulted. Spencer reveals in a testimonial voiceover to a judge that he went to Boylan's house to confront him about covering up the death of Gloria Wiesniewski. The argument became heated, and Spencer beat Boylan unconscious, saying that he had it coming. Five years later, Spencer is nearly out of prison. He is approached by Squeeb, a member of an Aryan supremacist prison gang. He and the other Aryans meet to deliver Spencer a going-away message. Spencer then gets into a battle and fights everyone off before being released. Spencer is picked up by his friend and associate, Henry Simoli. To his surprise, Spencer's ex-girlfriend Sissy Davis arrives at the prison to get him up, but Spencer and Henry flee in Henry's car. Henry takes Spencer to his new home, where his dog Pearl still resides, and he now shares a room with a man named Hawk. To Spencer's dismay, Pearl seemed to have taken liking to Hawk rather than being happy to see him. Later that night, Boylan is driving home while talking on the phone with his daughter. He drives near a bus yard and is hit by a truck. Boylan is pulled out of his car by a bunch of masked guys who beat him mercilessly, as his daughter listens. They accuse Boylan of discussing something they did, and one man kills him with a machete. The next morning, a nurse called Letitia Graham returns home to discover her husband Terence dead in the front seat of his car, with a gunshot wound to the head. Letitia bursts into tears as people rush in to help. The murder of Boylan becomes widely reported and Spencer is immediately identified as the prime suspect. Driscoll and another investigator visit Spencer to confirm that he was not near the crime site when Boylan was killed, but every other cop in the city despises Spencer and believes he was involved. Spencer then goes about his day by starting a new job as a truck driver, but after he sees Terence being accused of involvement in the murder, as well as the media's belief that he committed suicide out of guilt and Letitia in distress on TV, he decides to solve the case himself because he knew Terence and knew he was a great cop. Spencer meets with Letitia, who says that the officers who searched her home knew exactly where to look for a stash of cocaine that had definitely been planted. She informs Spencer that Terence was last seen going to a cop a bar with Boylan. Spencer goes to the cop bar and meets with another detective who might have known about Terence's contact with Boylan. Spencer honestly apologizes for how he handled the situation with Boylan, but a couple other cops loyal to Boylan enter and begin fighting Spencer before kicking him out. He then goes to a local bodega, where surveillance cameras show Terence and Boylan meeting outside the bar. He brings it home to inspect with the assistance of Hawk. Spencer later visits the crime scene to seek for anything that may have been missed. He finds Driscoll at a gym, where he denies having been at the crime scene, but Spencer suspects differently because he discovered a toothpick there, which Driscoll is known to have in his mouth. Spencer and Hawk eat lunch together, but Spencer is disappointed to see Sissy present. She follows him into the bathroom, where they have fast sex. She mentions how they had a pregnancy scare that Spencer insisted on being there for the child even if they didn't marry, but Sissy is glad that she did not get pregnant. After they leave, Spencer and Hawk notice the identical Corvette that appeared in the security camera. Spencer chases it on foot and runs into a garden, where he is attacked by a guard dog. However, Hawk was able to obtain the number plate number. Spencer takes it to the DMV and pushes the men behind the counter to give him the information. The automobile belonged to tracksuit Charlie Bentwood, an Irish mafia enforcer. Spencer, Hawk, and Henry sit outside to keep a watch on Bentwood while he gets a massage. Spencer explains his entire history with Boylan and Gloria Wiesniewski, including how he used to shovel snow off her mother's porch when he was younger and how Gloria was an activist against gentrification. Bentwood was sent to scare her away, but she refused to leave. She returned home to find her cat nailed to the door, and Spencer later discovered her dead in a trunk. He had to deliver the news to Gloria's mother himself. He watched security camera evidence of criminals attacking and murdering Gloria, but later discovered that Boylan was simply sitting on the murder case and kicked Spencer out when he asked him about it. This is what led Spencer to attack Boylan in his home. Hawk then vandalizes Bentwood's automobile to make him angry. They continue to investigate Bentwood for a few days when two FBI agents tell Spencer to drop the case. Spencer visits Squeeb because he believes he has some answers to help solve the crime. Squeeb refuses to speak until Spencer shows him his phone, where Henry is filming Hawk on a date with Squeeb's girlfriend. Squeeb gives in and says only one word to Spencer, Wonderland. Spencer and Hawk learn from reporter Wayne Cosgrove that Wonderland is a casino syndicate managed by crooked cops and the Trinitarios gang. Spencer passes by a location where he is confronted by two Trinitarios, who force him to leave. 
Boylan is given a traditional officer's funeral, whilst Terence is only given a small one with close family and friends. Driscoll discusses with his partner, Macklin, a situation that is developing between them and could result in unwanted exposure. Spencer goes to a restaurant, and the Trinitarios notice him. They attack him with machetes, but Spencer fights them off before Hawk crashes in with his car. Knowing that the Trinitarios are aware of his identity and potentially target him, Spencer urges Pearl and Hawk to hide with Sissy. He then goes Letitia's home after it has been vandalized, and she gives him an audio tape that Terence secreted between himself and Boylan. The audio confirms that Boylan was a dirty cop, that Bentwood, Macklin, and Driscoll all worked together, and that Driscoll gave the fatal blow to Boylan. Spencer brings the audio to the FBI, but they think it insufficient proof to arrest Driscoll. Spencer finds Bentwood and brutally interrogates him. He admits that drugs are being shipped from New Hampshire to Wonderland. Spencer and Hawk locate the truck and drive it off the road, killing two of the robbers inside before discovering the stash. Driscoll then contacts Spencer, knowing that Spencer is aware of him, so he kidnaps Henry and orders Spencer to meet in Wonderland within an hour. Sissy joins the two on their mission and helps Henry escape. Spencer and Hawk arrive on a truck to destroy the, the criminals' automobiles before fighting them all off until it's only Spencer and Driscoll. The two battle, and Driscoll almost wins, but Spencer fights him and stops short of beating him in the same way he beat Boylan to avoid returning to jail. They leave the filthy officers outside with all of the evidence, just as the cops come to arrest Driscoll and his associates. Terence is exonerated and will be given a proper officer's funeral, with a scholarship established for his kid. Spencer, Hawk, Sissy, and Henry go out to celebrate Lobster, until Spencer sees a news broadcast of a church fire from two years ago, and the Boston Fire Chief is arrested as a suspect, despite his claims of innocence. Spencer claims to know the person, which gives Henry and Sissy a horrible feeling that Spencer will take on this case too.